Konnichiwa, you fucking cunts. My name is Ronnie Ungard, and we're back here for some Pokemon Platinum Girl. Now, in the last part, we got all, all the way up to a Turner, almost at a Turner City, Turner Forest, and we captured some new teammates. Some which I um, decided to level up to the rest of the team, but um, Narcissus I held off on and just, you know, leveled it up to level 12. You know, pretty, pretty sensible, you know. Because, um, <laughs> I, um, well, grinding in uh, experience is not the only thing I did once again. I, um, I pretty much ran for like an hour or two straight <laughs> just to grind up uh, Narcissus's um, happiness level. And, girl, let me tell you, because um, for most Pokemon, pretty much, like, 90% of Pokemon, easily. Uh, also, uh, Work Bitch, also, I gave, um, gave it the Rock Tomb TM, because, uh, uh, fire and fighting type would, uh, benefit quite a bit from a rock type attack, so. That was really it. Um, yeah, most Pokemon, 90% of them, start with 70 points in happiness, so the climb to 220 is, like, uh, only 100, well, quote-unquote, only 150 points. Not the case with Boneary, because Boneary is one of the few Pokemon, if not the only Pokemon, that starts with zero happiness. It literally hates you when you capture it. But lo and fucking behold, I ran for the... Because, keep this in mind, for every 128 steps, there's a 50% chance of me getting one friendship points. Meaning that 128 times 220, that is the, if I got, you know, the 50% roll every time. And considering I don't have the best luck in the world, yeah, I did a lot of running. <laughs> but, it's, I would consider that pretty worth it, because, you know, Having a Lobunny this early in the game is, you know, actually pretty good, because, you know, Lobunny isn't the most useful Pokemon in the world, but, uh, I'm, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's, it is now our strongest <laughs> member of the team, because now it has, uh, well, not only, you know, just, uh, in the, in the um, category of stats, you know, raw stats, I think it has like the the most, um, but then also uh, it has a return, which uh, coming off of a Pokemon that has almost max happiness, that return is probably like, if not 90 power, very close to it. So, <laughs> actually, let, let me put it on the, up on. Oh my God, I just had a mini mini stroke. Um, let me put up on a screen the lowest amount of power return could have, uh, considering that I was able to evolve uh, through happiness, because it, it, it needs at least uh, 220 points of happiness to evolve, and the max amount of friendship points is uh, 255. So the minimum amount of power return can have is... Okay. <laughs> as, you, as that probably is going to tell you, that's... Um, that's a pretty solid amount of power. <laughs> and especially considering that um, that return is um, boosted by same type attack bonus, which, you know, just in case you don't know what same type attack bonus is, um, if a Pokemon uses a move that is the same type as it is, so for example, whenever um, uh, our one Monferno work bitch is using uh, either Ember, a fire move, or a Mach Punch, a fighting type move, uh, it gets a 50% bonus to those attacks. Uh, but it would not get that 50% bonus on, say, Rock Tomb, which is a rock type attack, and, you know, Monferno is neither a... Well, it, it's, it's a fire and fighting type, but it is not a rock type, so it would not get the bonus on Rock Tomb. So considering that, you know, power I just put up, double, well, not double, um, multiply that by 1.5, uh, 
And yeah, that's the effective power we have on that retort, which is pretty solid. I mean, at ma if at max power, uh, yeah, if um, if return is at max power, max power of return, by the way, is uh, 102 power, so a little over 100. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if, it, if it has max power and uh, you get a same type attack bonus, it is actually the equivalent of a Hyper Beam or a Giga Impact from a non-normal type Pokemon. So, that's actually kind of crazy. And that's, you know, not even mentioning the fact that, imagine, <laughs> that's actually one thing that I've, um, done in recent, I think I talk, mentioned it just briefly in Emerald, is um, uh, the the grade that uh, Hyper Beam goes on. Uh, same kind of thing with the repels, you know, that you you start out by just buying max repels, because, you know, they're the best repels. Why would you not buy the best repels? Um, but then you learn that super repels are more cost-effective, so you start buying super repels instead of max repels. But then later on, well, I mean, I, I'm you know just speaking for myself, but I feel like I feel like it is something that people can relate to. Uh, is you know, <laughs> there comes a point where you, like you don't really care about being cost effective. You just care about the fact that you know you get 50 extra steps of you know the text box not popping up, um, especially in the the games before uh, Pokemon Black Two and White Two, where the because in Black 2 and White 2 and onwards, you know, you get the, hey, do you want to use another repel? Which, you know, you don't get in the older games. So, uh, especially in the newer games, I I still kind of usually buy super repels, unless I, you know, literally don't care about money. Uh, but in the older games, I go for the max repels as soon as I can, because, uh, Gran, I don't want to bother with that shit. Hell no. Uh... And yeah, that's the same thing with um, Hyper Beam and uh, Giga Impact. Well, especially Hyper Beam for, uh, for us, uh, <laughs> us older people that played, you know, the first three generations when uh, Giga Impact did not exist. But, um, you know, um, you start out by, you know, when you're kind of, when you're a little kid and into your lower teens and you're like, Oh, Hyper Beam is it's so good because it's so strong and it's 150 power and I really love strong attacks. Oh. Uh, and then, you know, you uh, get a little older and then you're like, well, actually, if you look at it, you know, technically, um, Hyper Beam is only 75 power because, you know, you have to recharge the next turn. And, you know, that, not, not that that's wrong, because that is technically correct. Um... But, it is actually pretty useful for, um, specifically for the Pokemon that gets stabbed from its so normal types, and, uh, it's pretty good if you are confident that, uh, you're, you're, you're pretty sure you can finish off the opposing Pokemon with a Hyper Beam, um, but not with, you know, any of your other attacks. Um, so I actually started using... Uh, Hyper Beam and uh, Geek Impact in game again. Uh, I started using it on. Um, I think it was a um, a Noctowl in uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver. I used. Um, well, I gave it Hyper Beam just, you know, because I just thought that it, you know, this might be a fun idea. And um, it actually ended up being pretty useful because, uh, you know, Hyper Beam is a pretty good um, attack, as I said, for a, like a finishing move. If you're like fairly confident, as well, yeah, as I literally just said, in that you know, if you're confident, think you can finish it off, and you want to try and take that chance, it's a pretty good option. And Narcissus, Narcissus, or a level sixteen and gets quick attack. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to use Endure at all, so might as well just give it Quick Attack. Uh, probably going to erase Quick Attack whenever I get, you know, a better option, because, uh... Lebunny, if it has one stat going for it, it is speed. Like, it, it is actually, like, fairly fast. 
don't actually know how fast it is. I th maybe I, you know, let's pop that up on the screen as well. How fast is La Bunny? Hmm. Okay. Let and now you know. Let me take a guess. <laughs> I think it is 97 speed, or that might be its special defense. Because the thing about La Bunny is that you know, if you look at its stats. It is actually more defensive than it is offensive. Like, it has better defense and special defense than um, attack and special attack. So it's, like, honestly kind of good at, um, like, in lower tiers, it's pretty good for, like, uh, support and uh, disruption. You know, by using, for example, it could use a Toxic Orb and... Uh, uh, switcheroo or a, an iron ball and switcheroo. Like, it, it has like a a lot of different, you know, disruption things it can do. And I think it also has healing wish, which is a, a pretty useful move for like a support Pokemon. So, it gets, it gets a lot of interesting options, surprisingly. Now, if I remember correctly, there's an Abra. Well, there's a duo of Abras coming up, which they both have a uh, hidden power, and I believe it's a hidden power of fighting, so uh, as long as we have Roselia, we should be uh, pretty good. Usually, uh, um, you know, I used to pretty much always just do the battles as double battles, but uh, if, if you're so inclined, you can just, you know, talk to them one, one and one. Uh, if you feel like facing two Pokemon at once can be a little dangerous, which, you know, it, it is actually kind of dangerous to face two Pokemon head-on, because you, you always run the risk of them ganging up on you, which is, uh, can't, well, has the potential of being really dangerous if both of your opponents has moves that uh, unexpectedly is good against you. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're uh, in the situation that, oh shit, my opponents decided to a uh, single target on me and now you know I'm dead pretty much and yeah I, I was correct in uh, my assumption that uh, it was in power fighting since you know the only type Chansey as weak to is fighting since it's a normal type <laughs> also I'm just gonna say right now that if you hear some kind of like weird whistling like a sound of air escaping something that is just my water bottle sitting next to me because I have um, I I had two water bottles that I put into my freezer and forgot <laughs> I put them in there over well I, I was only supposed to put them in there for like the for yesterday evening and uh, yeah kind of forgot about them overnight so they when I took them out Today they were completely frozen, <laughs> so now it's just you know this water bottle is completely filled with ice and just a little bit of water in there because I um I took them out you know this uh, like 11 a.m. today and as you can see from the clock it's now five so it, well I took them out and I put them in uh, my uh, refrigerator so they didn't completely melt because uh, well it, actually it's not. It's not that warm anymore, thankfully. It's uh, the the intense heat wave that once was uh, has uh, finally calmed its tits, thankfully. Because <laughs> hot diggity, that was pretty fucking unbearable. Because um, well, I actually did. I don't. I don't mind the quote unquote aesthetic. Of a, of a heat wave. I, I really like when, you know, there's... It's just this really bright blue sun with, like, almost no clouds, and, you know, it, everything's just sunny and bright and happy, and, yeah. I, I, I like the aesthetic, but what I don't like is, you know, waking up in a pool of my own sweat. Like, no, please, stop. <laughs> or just the fact that, you know, there were some nights that it was it was literally too warm to sleep, cause um, where I live is um, well my apartment is like the 
It's 20 square meters, which I literally don't know how to calculate that in uh, square feet, so if you calculate your shit in square feet, then I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to do that shit yourself. Um, but 20 square meters is not, like, a lot, and uh, at least a third of that is, like, my bathroom. For some, for some reason, my bathroom is, like, fucking gigantic compared to the size of my overall apartment um but the thing is is that there's there's not really you know any kind of uh, uh f airflow at all like <laughs> when it when uh, when it gets warm in here it stays warm for like a long ass time um because there's only one window so like there's no like breeze going through at all uh, and in general, uh, my uh, my uh, window is facing, or uh, my window in my apartment in general is facing uh, towards uh, east, which means that you know in summertime, 6 a.m. or well even before 6 a.m. really, pretty much you know when the sun s it gets up, my apartment just turns into a fucking oven. <laughs> Um, and it stays that way throughout the day, and then, you know, it doesn't exactly get any colder <laughs> during the middle and end of the day, so... That's fun. Um... So, I, I, I've definitely appreciated now that it's, like... Because there, there were times where, like, it, it would literally not dip below, uh, 20 degrees Celsius during the night, which, you know is literally unheard of in Norway. <laughs> like, that's something that... Like, that is something that was literally... It was in, like, the newspapers, it was on the news, like... Oh my god, because it's like, um... I think they call it, like, a tropical night or whatever. Um, when, you know, it, the temperature stays at or above 20 degrees Celsius throughout the night. Um, and also keep in mind that, uh... It is, like, especially where I live, it is humid as fuck. Like, it is, like, almost... Like, I think I looked it up, and there is, there's, like, almost no time of the year where the humidity dips below 80. And I'm pretty sure it was, you know, even more humidity now, because, uh... Jeez Louise. <laughs> it got pretty crazy. And no, we're not teaching you self-destruct, because, uh... I don't trust myself to not, you know, misclick it accidentally, because, uh... Know knowing me, that could very well happen. I was actually thinking of, I'm, uh... I'm pretty happy that I didn't have to resort to, um... Blowing up Spunt in Pokemon Emerald, because I did give it an explosion, just, you know... As a, as a failsafe, just, you know, in case, um... But I'm pretty happy it didn't have to come to that, because, uh, you know, I, I, I did grow to uh, appreciate Spunt. Now, I'm still not the biggest fan of, um, of, um, Electrode in general. I mean, it's, eh, it's just kind of bland. But, uh, but I definitely did grow to love Spunt. <laughs> and, and I'm happy that I was able to carry it through, because I, I lit literally from when I caught it, I carried it to, th like, through the end of the game. Like, there, were, there was never a time where I, you know, threw it off the team, even temporarily. There, there were a lot of times where I considered it, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, it never actually happened. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty curious how um, how this team is going to be, because, you know, if you just look at the trend of how it's going so far, this team is actually looking kind of interesting, because, uh, well, I'm, that's really the thing about, you know, playing, <laughs> like, playing through Nuzlocke's so many times that I have, is that, you know, it, it, ends, it, en it ends up becoming pretty, you know, samey after a while, because, you know... <laughs> Oh, I'm using fucking Starly for the tenth fucking time or whatever. Um, or like, well, I guess like I haven't 
none, none of these Pokemon, really, I've used more than, like, one or two times, actually. So, I'm, I'm pretty happy about the diversity on our team. Also, I guess I should show, just in case, because, um... Well, yeah, Cheeker, Scott, Spark, so that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Sorry that I'm going over this now, you know, I'm pretty, pretty late. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody gained anything else, so... Just did. wanted to be safe and check. Also, yep, okay. <laughs> I still have that um, system of like, um, I order my Pokemon from uh, from lowest to highest level, and then I order them uh, according to their HP. Like, I don't really know why I follow that system in particular, but you know, I, I just like having things organized, I suppose. Hmm, let's go for the Meditite. The, the Meditite isn't really that scary, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any physical attacks, meaning that all its attacks uh, are coming from its very, very mediocre special attack. Like, I believe it has, you know, 40 special attack, which is, you know, pretty, uh, pretty not good. <laughs> uh, but its attack... It, it, on on paper, it has as as much attack, a special attack, because uh, I believe it has um, forty in both. Um, but um, but then you know it has a pure power which uh, doubles its attack stat, um, but it doesn't double its base stat, um, so it doesn't go from forty to eighty, which would have been very unimpressive. Uh, but it doubles the um, the effective s number of the stat. So, like, say, if uh, you at 40 attack had a 20 attack, uh, you know, you know, on the stat screen when you see how many points you have in each stat, um, then it would, you know, pure power would double that number, not the base stat. So we would have 40 attack points, which would be the equivalent, I believe, of something like a hundred and... something hundred in attack. Um, same thing with Medicham, um, because it has, uh, you know, on paper 60 attack, uh, but thanks to pure power it has something crazy like 160 base attack, which, you, you know, is pretty friggin' insane. Now there is one thing that I thought about, which is um, how I'm gonna deal with uh, move tutors, because I'm kind of tempted to just you know, <laughs> literally just hack in shards instead of just grinding for them, because grinding for them takes like a fucking millennia, um, and I don't really feel like it's cheap to do that, because you know. I would I would just do that off screen anyway, so like there's no there's no loss for you, the viewer. the The only difference is that I'm gonna be able to teach my Pokemon, um, you know, tutor moves, which you know I could have done anyway, but it would have just taken me a much a much longer time off screen. So, um, well, I don't I don't really think that I have anybody that's I don't, I don't really have anybody that comments on my videos, but uh, in case you're watching and I haven't posted a, you know, part, you know, 30 or whatever, well, I think I'm gonna be there earlier than part 30. I think, I think I might be there by part 20. In the early, in the early 20s, I think I'm gonna be in Pasoria. So, uh, you know. If I haven't posted to the part where I get to Pasoria, then uh, comment below. What do you think? Do you think it would be bad for me to hack in the shards, or do you think that would be the worst thing ever? Personally, you know, as I said, I don't really mind, but uh, I, I definitely like to uh, get input from other people. You know, not just you know in this specific scenario of um, you know. A listener uh, uh, talking to me, uh, the quote-unquote host, but just in general throughout life, I, I like getting input from other people to, 
because that in, that helps you, you know, make a more informed decision. Because then, you know, you don't have to rely on the hindsight afterwards. But um, then, then that's really pretty much the only thing I'm thinking of, you know, quote unquote, hacking in. Because you know, I, I want to try to do all of these runs at, as legit as possible. So. I don't really want to do any kind of, you know, cheating or hacking or anything like that. Um, and there's really nothing else that I would even consider, you know, hacking in, as it were. Um, one thing that I've started kind of doing is um, where I try to do um, what they've done in Generation 5 and onwards, where the, the TMs are uh, infinite. Uh, and what I do is I just hack in, um, well I do, I get, use like an action replay code to get all the TMs. Um, and then what I do, whenever, whenever I acquire that specific TM in game, like say for example at the beginning of the game now, where we got the return TM, like that would quote unquote unlock my use for that TM. Um, so I wouldn't be able to use all the other TMs until I you know, acquired it in game, but it would just mean that I, you know, upgraded the game from uh, generation four to generation five and onwards with uh, the infinite TMs, because uh, it's, it's basically making a future feature available in the in, in the past game, pretty much. So I don't really, you know, consider that too like. <laughs> I guess it's, it's, it should, it should uh, say cheaty, which you know definitely definitely isn't a word. Hmm. Considering slathering this, because um, if I remember correctly, there's not too much to um, to find here anyway. Now you give us the friendship checker, which is gonna be useful, you know later on, but uh, <laughs> not right now, because I'm pretty sure that everybody except for Labunny has maximum happiness, because, I mean, if, if I manage to get um, uh, Labunny Narcissus from 0 to 220, pretty sure I was able to get all the others from 70 to 255. <laughs> oh. But, I think that's going to be it for now. This, you know, ended up being a <laughs> 27 minute episode anyway, so I think I'm gonna be seeing you guys in the next time Goodbye